we are happy to release a video on parallel endoscopic myotomy after successful completion of 51 cases of poem this video is very important for the postgraduate gi fellow who want to learn third space endoscopy here we will be discussing about poem first indication contraindications what are the principle of third space endoscopy what are the equipments what are the steps of poem procedure and how to handle complication how to do a post operative care we technique with tips and tricks poem procedure what are the indication? All the patients who have been diagnosed with the ecclesia cardia, including sigmoid esophagus and prior surgery, can undergo poem procedure. Other motility disorder like diffuse esophageal spasm, Jake Hemmer esophagus, ineffective esophageal motility, these, these patients should be considered for poem. When we cannot do poem, the patient will not be tolerated than anesthesia because of severe cardiopulmonary disease and coagulopathy and thrombocytopenia preclude any major surgery. In presence of portal hypertension, hypertension there may be a lot of collaterals around esophagus and the chances of bleeding during myotomy is very high and these, these patients should not undergo point procedure. If anybody has a disease mucosa because of prior radiation, photodynamic therapy, radio frequency, ablation and prior mucosal resection should not undergo point procedure. Poem is a prototype of third space endoscopy. To learn what is the third space endoscopy, which is the third space. Third space is the space within lying the wall of esophagus. This sub here you can see sub mucosa. Sub mucosa is expandable space which can be expanded by injecting a lot of water, and hence after expansion, this space can accommodate our scope, and we, we can do various therapeutic over here. To so, know poem procedure we should always remember the play fall mechanism the mucosal incision and muscle incision should not be in the same line after making mucosal incision then you have to enter into the submucosa and you have to expand that space and subsequently you have to cut all the loose area of fiber to reach the lower esophageal inspector where muscle to be cut what are the equipment required High definition upper GI end endoscope who have auxiliary channel fitted with the transparent distal cap should be used. This procedure being done under complete CO2 insufflation to prevent air related complication. In the high end electrocautery like RB, C100D, Olympus, C100, ESG should be used. And injection needles should be used to make a mucosal blab and hemoclips are used to close the mucosal incision. Coagulation grasper phosphate is used to coagulate interventory vessels and to control any bleed which happen during tunneling and myotomy. The TTJ knife and hybrid knife, uh, this is knife mainly used for the dissection starting from the mucosal incision till myotomy. Submucosal solution like a 0.3% indigo carmine or methane should be used that this solution allow better visibility of the intervening vessels and low cellular tissue. This uh, procedure being done under complete general anesthesia and the anesthesia machine with the EPCO2 monitoring should be used. Before, we, uh, before performing poem procedure, we have to do endoscopy and we have to evaluate esophagus for three things. First for content. In the A, you can see absolutely clean esophagus. In B, you can see liquid residue in the esophagus. And C, you can see solid debris in the esophagus. From A to C, the difficulty scale increase because the chances of submucosal fibrosis increase as fused and liquid residue stay in the esophagus. Then we have to evaluate esophagus for shape and tortuosity. Here in the A you can see absolutely straight esophagus. In B you can see multiple circular rings. In C you can see the semicircular ring. And D the semicircular ring being extended beyond midpoint of esophagus. 
in ESG you can see multiple diverticles. And then we have to classify the submucosal, uh, then we have to classify the esophageal mucosa to scale the difficulty of poem procedure. In the A, you can see the absolutely clean mucosa with clear vasculature. In B, you can see rough mucosa. And C, you can see granular mucosa, D, pachylitic mucosa, E, the ulceration of mucosa, F, there is scarring. Mucosa. You can perform a poem from A to C and uh, the D and E you should wait and F you should not perform. Now poem procedure mainly divided into the four steps. First step, first step is mucosal injection, mucosal incision, then entry into the submucosal space. And step two is submucosal tunneling. Step three is myotomy, and step four is the closure of mucosal incision. To make a mucosal incision, first you have to go to the D junction, then you have to mark on your scope, and then you have to come back around 10 centimeters. Then, how to identify the site of mucosal injection? If you want to perform a posterior poem, then mucosal injection should be on. Uh, five o'clock. If you want to perform an anterior poem, it should be it should be on around two o'clock, and the posterior poem should be on lateral to the spine. While injecting, then uh, needle should be out of the seat. Then we have to inject. Then you have to withdraw the needle. Sometimes while withdrawing, your needle completely out of that site. Then you have to again inject, and then start uh, uh, this cell line. Here you, you, you can see the seepage of the uh, stain line from the previous injection site, and you have to make an adequate mucosal blade. What's the definition of adequate mucosal blade? If elevation should be more than the size of cave. Here you can see I am injecting a cell line mixed with the indigo carmine at uh, 20 ml. If you are not getting a good blade despite of injection, it, is, it may be because of either you are injecting into the muscle, either you are encountering the submucosal fibrosis. Here you can see I am injecting at a 5 o'clock, but the blab is forming from 6 to 9 o'clock. This is because of focal submucosal fibrosis. The submucosal fibrosis most of the time is not circumferential. Hence, if you cannot do posterior poem, then you can do anterior poem. Then wherever you get a good blab, you can perform a point. Then you have to make a mucosal incision. First you have to make a hole in the mucosa. Then you can either extend this incision anterior grade, anterior gradely and retrogradely. Here I am extending this incision on retrograde side by withdraw withdrawal of the scope. Sometimes while you are extending, you, you can trace some ooze from the mucosal, mar mucosal margin, which can be easily controlled by applying the few stroke of coagulation current, which you can notice over here. Now you can see the absolutely clean mucosal incision. Sometimes you can trace a significant bleed from the mucosal margin. And then first you have to irrigate with the saline with the indigo carmine to exactly identify the site of bleeder. Here I am irrigating and now I identified the site and then I applied the few stroke of coagulation current over there and then bleed immediately ceases. After the irrigation you can see the no active bleed. After mucosal incision, you have to undermine both margin and apex. Here you do, I am undermining the right margin first, and then on apex, and then on left side. And then I have to bring the incision on uh, 12 o'clock, and then uh, I engage the tip into both margin, and then I enter into the submucosal tunnel.
in this video you can see the submucosal fibrosis preventing the entry of cap into the submucosa to make a submucosal tunnel you have to dissect the submucosal fibrosis the submucosal fibrosis dissection should be perpendicular to the muscle here you can see i am dissecting very close to the muscle very wide tunnel and the single movement of the scope i am extending this incision and i am very close to the muscle and if there is any injury happen to the muscles doesn't matter because eventually this muscle being cut in in this video you can see i am not very close to the muscle and i am dissecting the loose area tissue sometime if you are not lucky then you can face submucosal fibrosis because of submucosal fibrosis even after injection this sub, uh, this submucosa stays not expand hence we, you can also notice the splitting of muscle fiber because of close adherence of the muscle to the mucosa then you have to dissect these submucosal fibrosis by a coagulation current here you can see i am dissecting this uh, submucosal fibrosis and extending the tunnel further the advantage of this fg taper tip cap if you are having narrow tunnel even though you can negotiate this thick tip of cap into that area and you can dissect and which facilitate further entry of is open to that part submucosal tunnel that i already told you lateral dissection is much more important than the central dissection you should have a adequate lateral dissection or dissection should be adequate on both side right and left here you can see the more tunnel more dissection on the right side here you can see more dissection on the left side this you have to recognize very early and correct then how you have to identify that you have reached the g junction you, you can know by the depth of incision you can know when you started encountering resistance while you are negotiating this scope into the tunnel because this lower is lower esophageal splinters is spastic in ecclesia cardia you are start getting the palisading vessels on the mucosal side and spindle shaped vessel on the muscle side and you can came out of the tunnel and you go to the stomach and retroflex the scope you can see the blood discoloration of cardia on the retroflexion you start getting these aberrant muscle fiber and sometimes you get perforating vessel size bleed sometimes happen while tunneling here you can see when you do when you do a fast dissection sometimes you encounter with bleed in the submucosal tunnel because you have done inadequate dissections you are not able to identify the exact site of the bleeder and then i am trying to control with the coagulation grasper and i am not able to catch the exact bleeder because of inadequate dissection subsequently i dissect by the ttj knife and then i identify the exact bleeder and by applying the few stroke of coagulation current i control the bleed in the second video you can notice the multiple bleed happen same time and which was controlled by the coagulation forceps and i am doing a myotomy across the g junction it's a complete myotomy because the g junction is very rich in the vasculature i am doing myotomy by the coagulation current only and i am extending this incision into the stomach here you can see after identify the correct after identifying the correct plane of myotomy the myotomy become very easy just just by applying force by ttj knife i am applying the force by ttj knife with few stroke coagulation current then cut current in the same way i am extending till g junction you can see absolutely clean myotomy
once you reach the G junction, better to do a complete myotomy by coagulation current only. You can also notice the perigastric fate. And I'm extending this myotomy into the stomach to ensure proper result. When you do myotomy, you can encounter bleed. Like in this case, bleed happened from the apex and I extend this myotomy and then the side of bleed come on the right margin, which adequately controlled by the applying few stroke of coagulation current. In another case, bleed happened from the right margin of myotomy and which also controlled by the coagulation current only. No coagulation forceps are required. Most integral step in the POEM procedure to prevent leak is to close the mucosal incision. First clip should be applied distal to the distal margin of mucosal incision. Ensure the adequate grabbing of left margin. You can see first clip by the fly and the second clip, both margin be adequately grabbed, then apply suction and then close. Likewise, we apply multiple clip you can notice similar way we apply another clip and multiple clip. And the last clip should be applied just proximal to the mucosal incision. In this video, we have applied first three clips from distal margin. And then you can notice that it was uh, the margin got everted and left margin got inverted and right margin got inverted. To ensure proper inversion, we have applied distal clip to ensure to align this mucosal incision in one line to ensure complete closure. Sometimes you had a gastric perforation, then you need not to worry that and also be controlled by the closure by multiple clip, the first clip was applied distal to the perforation site and subsequently three more clip applied. And the last clip applied just proximal to the perforation site. And here you can notice the adequate grabbing of both margin of perforation site. Post-operative post care equally important. You have to ask the patient for a strict NPO for 24 hours. IV and LJC, IV antibiotic, PPI are required. All the patients giving anti emetic to prevent any nausea and postoperative vomiting. And the gastrography should be, study should be done after 24 to 48 hours. And the liquid diet given for five days, oral antibiotic for five days. And you have to repeat manometry in upper jaw endoscopy after three months. Thanks for your patience hearing. If you have any question, you can put on comment section. We will be happy to answer all the questions. Thank you. I hope this video will be helpful to learn third space endoscopy